Yeah. yeah. Damn, bro. Ain't nobody drink water more angry than him. <laughs> <laughs> I, made that shit I made it bust without even putting it in my mouth. What happened at the Daily Show, yo? What they do to <laughs> yeah, He's in the Illuminati, man. I've been in the Illuminati, man. What y'all talking about? What'd you have to do to get in the Illuminati? <laughs> Come on, son. <laughs> Come on, son. The initiation. You want in or you don't want in? You wipe it off, you don't want in. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> wait, 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 excuse me. <laughs> yep, Charlemagne the guy. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Back for another week of Brilliant Idiotness, baby! Hezekiah Walker, what's happening? I'm good, man. I'm chilling. Let the record show we are taping this at like 8 p.m. on a Thursday night. Uh, I'm, this is my third gig of the day. Breakfast okay. Club. Did Breakfast Club this morning. Daily Show. Did Daily Show. Brilliant Idiots. Now Brilliant Idiots, you know what I mean? If Hardest working man in the business. Well, I think they might be harder. Kevin Hart, Nick Cannon. Those guys work pretty hard. It's just a full day. But you know the beauty of it? And I thought about this as I was on the way over here. Everything is different. You know what I'm saying? What like, mean? Breakfast Club isn't Daily Show. Daily Show isn't Brilliant Idiots. It's all different. You know? Like, this morning on Breakfast Club, we had Carrie Champion and Lauren LaRosa debating about why women hate each other. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, why do women hate each other? That, why do they, Taylor? Well, did you come to a conclusion after they finished talking? This is nothing. This is in private. Because I don't hate you. It was interesting. It was an interesting conversation. Think... Latin women don't hate each other. They be licking each other's buttholes and clits. Oh, shit. <laughs> Yeah. Oh shit! Good time. Like, <laughs> He's good not a Latin time. woman. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm a Latin pop star. You are a Latin pop I'm star. I'm a Latin pop star. Is there in my you know, Daddy Yankee went to Christian, yo. I saw that. That's crazy. Daddy Yankee. Daddy said he, went to Daddy. He's doing Christian music. Not really. To be honest with you. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I didn't really that, get that. I agree clip with you. that and give it to me <laughs> just so that could be Taylor's ringtone. <laughs> Do you want me to answer? Nah, not really. Anytime she calls my phone, Do you want me to answer? Nah, not really. I love you, Taylor. I love you, Taylor. You can't say it back? I don't want to call you. Yo, yo, stop lying. I don't call you. You text? I do text you. You don't answer my text last night. Because I'm waiting for a call. Why do people need you to answer text back? Yo, for real. That's my answer. You see it says red. Yeah. So just send me the message. I asked him a legit question for your show. What was the question? Was completely what question did you ask? Guess if you wanted to guess from your show. Who was it? Uh, it was like some MMA fighter. Sounds exciting. <laughs> 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 Sounds incredibly exciting, Taylor. Salute to everybody who watched uh, the Daily Show. This Yo, this is the Thank second you, yeah. week. Are you the only person that's done two weeks? Nah, Leslie Jones did two weeks. Sarah Silverman did two weeks. Uh, and Cal Penn's doing a second week next week. Yo, with all due respect, hmm. and maybe it's just my algorithm, but you're the only one that's like, I see headlines about things you said on The Daily Show, not on your Instagram or The Daily Show's Instagram. Interesting. But on news portals. Yeah. Now, this could be that you are, I mean, part of this is obviously that you are bigger than other people that are hosting the show. But uh, it's, if I, I don't know, I'm just saying, if I'm the Daily Show, I'm looking at the footprint from a Charlemagne week. It's interesting. You know, I mean, I, I, I was talking to my wife about this yesterday. It feels like um, when you do the Daily Show, at least for me, it's a culmination of like where my trajectory has been going, mm. you know? Because when you start having conversations with politicians and, you know, they start coming on Breakfast Club and, like, I, you know, I'm just a curious person. Like, been doing this. That's what I'm saying. And You've then, been doing this. And then, you know, doing God's Honest Truth and Hell of a Week. And it's just, like, every time I did those shows, I modeled them after The Daily Show. Mm. Like, that was my thing. Like, so you I felt like you have reps for this already. Yeah, because Daily, Daily, Daily Show is the pinnacle of any of those shows. Tax. You know what I mean? Like, I think there's two... Great formats and late night for that kind of show, and it's Bill Maher. And Daily Show. And then it's The Daily Show. Yep. And then even when you go look at people who've had success, like the John Olivers, yep. the Stephen Colbert's, when they went and did other shows, those shows were like The Daily Show, yep. because The Daily Show has such a system. Yeah. It has such a formula. And I'm not talking about the late show that Colbert does now. I'm talking about Colbert Report. He Colbert Report, do. yeah. So they have such a system and such a formula, man, that if you've been a part of it, 
you can pretty much go duplicate that, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, anywhere else. Good play. So, yeah, I feel like, you know, God God definitely has uh, put me in position so for a time So you enjoyed like this even oh, more I this week? It, bro. I really love it. Now, do you love... I love it like I love brilliant idiots. Really? Yeah. yeah. And it I, feels I, I, that loose? It feels that. It, it, no, I take it, 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 it. Yes, it does, but with a structure. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because it's different. You know what I mean? Like yeah, here yeah. at Breakfast Club, we freestyle. And here we freestyle. And Jelly Roll said that shit to me today. Jelly Roll said, yo, mate. He said, mate. I love Jelly Roll. Because Jelly Roll was on uh, last night. Jelly Roll said, yo, mate. He said, man, you know, I love you on Breakfast Club. You know what I'm saying? And Because, you know, you like, you like loose with it. You know what I'm saying? It's a freestyle. But he said, man, here, man. It's like, you're like a sniper, man. Like a sniper. It's like a sniper, man. I love this shit for you, man. You know? How is he on the show today? Oh, man, Jelly's fucking fantastic. You know what Jelly reminds me of? And I thought about that today. Jelly reminds me of Killer Mike. Ah. Jelly Roll reminds me of Killer fucking Mike. Like, because he, Je Jelly Roll's super smart. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Very intelligent right. guy. You know what I mean? But you, it, it might be, his, 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 his presentation might be disarming. Like, you might not think that. And then you you talk you to talk him. You talk to him, and you're like, oh, shit. But I'm talking about everything. His whole aesthetic to me is Killer Mike. And I'm not even talking about just size-wise. I'm talking about the things that come out of his Feels mouth. Feels like that's what you're His saying. energy. No, man. The things that come out of his mouth, his energy. He really loves his hometown. Yep. He wears his hometown on his back. Like, him and Killer Mike, I don't know. They just got very, very similar, similar, similar energy to me. Both you know? incredibly musical. Incredibly musical. Like, Jelly Roll. Jelly Roll is my favorite musical, well... Him and Killer Mike are my favorite musical stories of the year. Oh, wow. Because Killer Mike Michael is nominated for a Grammy. Mm -hmm. And he's actually nominated for a couple of Grammys. He's nominated for two Grammys for the album and then I think two for the single. But either way, I know Killer Mike is going to win Rap Album of the Year. Grammy, Recording Academy. If Killer Mike does not win Rap Album of the Year, something is wrong. If he does not win Rap Album of the Year for Michael, something is wrong. He definitely should win something for scientists and engineers, but there's no better rap album than Killer Mike all year long. Wow. You haven't heard I gotta, it? I got to go check it out. Oh, my God. Come on, man. Michael is fantastic. Phenomenal project. And he's nominated for Rap Album of the Year at the Grammys. And he should absolutely win. If y'all think Jelly Roll had a fantastic speech at the CMAs or whatever it was, let Killer Mike get up there and see what the fuck's going on. Mm. You know? So, yeah, I fuck, with, I fuck with both of them. Okay, so that was fun. This great. week, great on The Daily Show. Yes. Uh, any jokes that uh, are going to get cut that you can share with us? I'll tell y'all next week. Because you don't know just yet. I don't yet. know if they're going to get cut. <laughs> Charlamagne came in here. He was so excited to yeah. tell me the jokes that were just driving people crazy in the audience. Not the ones that were making them laugh. The ones that were making them hold their head in their hands. Taylor was there. Taylor? Taylor was there. Yeah. That's Andrew. Listen, Andrew has, I personally I feel, it. Andrew has it. bought that back. Okay. To where you can make those kind of jokes. And listen, it's not like the writer's on these shows don't want to make they these want to make jokes. them all the time yes. and now they have somebody who's willing to do it yes yeah, 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 yeah. you know the person kept Put the, talk to the microphone Taylor. like you said before that the comedian before he came out Vince August he had to keep saying you know Vince Vince August no. Vince August yeah he was the, yeah he was the like, warm up he had to keep saying like it's a joke like I don't like oh. that's what he said as soon as I came out he goes uh, so I mean, I don't think this is your kind of crowd tonight. <laughs> he said they're a little sensitive and a little slow. <laughs> but we have fun. It's just, I, I, I really enjoy doing The Daily Show. And it's just very fun to work in the same system as... The legend. Yeah, the icon like Jon Stewart. Mm. He's the guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Motherfuckers is really talking about him running for president, and they're serious about it. Yes. I mean, uh, I'm one of them. Yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> yeah. Yo, Alex, I'm not even joking. I'm yeah. with you. Yo, if he wanted to, I, I could get behind him. I, 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 at first, when I heard it, I'm like, I don't want another celebrity in chief. But then I thought about it, and I'm like, Jon Stewart is more than a comedian. I could get behind that. Jon Stewart has gotten more legislation passed than most members of Congress, mm -hmm. and he's just a common sense thinker who gives a fuck. I could get behind that. I, I, what? I, I can see it for him. I'm like, damn, John Stewart might be. And he's got a presidential name. Yeah, what are you doing, Taylor? I'm not trying to sit there, guys. Being jealous of Jelly Roll. Listen, 
Um, Wait, why would she be jealous of Jelly Roll? She want that name <laughs> for herself. Listen, um, <laughs> John Stewart even has a presidential name, yo. You gonna let him just move past that? that? No, I'm not. You said move past that. <laughs> yo, you a crazy guy, yo. The oh, fuck is your problem? Oh, yo? we in here today. Let's he's go. Mad because I said he had patches in his beard. She did. Earlier. She said that for no reason. That's why he's mad. I said it was for no reason. Sour like, I didn't have a beard. I said he. Had, he said he was a girl. He said he was a girl. His beard, and I said. <laughs> <He missed it. laughs> How do you get it? <laughs> what? Tell her! <laughs> Tell her! <laughs> you Wait, he doesn't have a full beard? No, you saw it too. Don't My beard was not patchy. Yes, yo. it was. You had a patch right here. Knock I would have a picture of it. Knock it off. Knock it off. That's Knock why you had to put, which one call it, monostat and shit on it. Try to make it grow. No, that was my hair. That was my actual head. And, where did, and what happened? It made your beard grow and have patches. How? That's what happened I put to it. on it. my hair. And nothing happened to your hair. Is yo. monostat when your vagina smells horrible, like garbage? Monastat. <laughs> like, you, you brought it up, but now you don't know what it is. You know what I'm saying? I you never brought had to it use up. It. Wait, wait. Isn't that what Monastat is for? Let's see. <laughs> Let's see. Taylor. Monastat, a restaurant in Lopper Darby. It's a buffet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he did Taylor. <laughs> Hold on. <Yeah. laughs> Okay, let's do some all memes necessary. You want to talk about the debate or no? Or first you want to talk about Adele Badu. Adele Badu? What Adele do? What the who? Vaginal yeast infections. Oh, shit. Taylor. What? Vaginal yeast infections is oh, what mom is status for. Why are we putting that you, in your exactly. fucking scalp, Because Tiffany Haddish told him to so grow his beard. Yeah, they said grow his beard. <laughs> you all remember that? Cause you know it's during the COVID, so I, we was letting my hair grow. <laughs> she was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Crazy. Yeah. crazy. Shout out to Tiffany. Allergy crazy. Shout out to Allergy Tiffany. crazy. What did you just say, Allergy? I didn't say nothing. You gotta say, Joe, don't no, laugh behind no, Tiff back, she yo. Mean, don't do that. Yo, Tiffany, comedian. we love you. Get right. better soon. Yeah. Get an Uber. <laughs> oh my God! What? A sound advice. Yeah, Sleuth is a good sister. Tiffany Haddish. Yeah. The good sister, si Tiffany Haddish, needs to get Uber. She loves you too, by the way. She said she, I love her she told too. me she met you somewhere. Yeah, we bumped into each other. Yeah. And, uh, what the fuck was that? Somewhere in New York. Yeah, there was a. Oh, it's a hotel that has like a bar in it. <laughs> what? Of a hotel has a bar in it. Yeah, this sounds super fishy. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> well, I was I in that fucking hotel. Oh, no, Dove was with her. Dove was with Tiffany? Yeah, I think he was with Tiffany and another one of her friends. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, Tiffany's Jewish, too. She is Jewish, but yeah, that's she not why Jewish. they were together. Tiffany's Dove. Jewish. She is. Yes. She's like an Ethiopian Jew. Oh, really? All right. You didn't know that? No, I didn't know. One yeah, of the originals. I went to Tiffany's Bar Mitzvah. All right, so. You ain't go to Tiffany's Bar Mitzvah because she's a woman. What would they call it? Ba. Bot mitzvah. Bot mitzvah. Yeah, I went to. I went to it. I was there when they did the. They did the whole ceremony and everything. Wait, why would she get bot mitzvah this? You late? didn't know you her. Bot mitzvah that. thirteen. Exactly. Yeah. It, was it was something. It was something when she turned forty. I'm not making this yeah. up. I was there. It's her birthday party, probably. Bro, I was, yo, yo, nah, nah, nah. nah yeah, was, like, no, it was, it was her birthday party, but it was a fucking, I'm telling you. It I wasn't was, a bot mitzvah, bro. Bro, she had a ceremony, man. I was there. They had the the rabbi and everything, yo. What do you think they were doing? I don't know. Hold on. Yeah, she had her bat mitzvah when she turned 40. That's not how... I mean, black people are late with shit, but usually <laughs> you do it around 13. That's the blackest Jewish shit I've ever heard in my life. A bat mitzvah 23 years later. Yeah, comedian and actress Tiffany Haddish had her bat mitzvah when she turned 40 years old. Since then, she has shared her experience learning new Jewish traditions and connecting with her roots. A bar or bat mitzvah is usually a ceremony that occurs when a Jewish child thir turns 13. Mm -hmm. It's a coming-of-age ritual in the Jewish community, but for Haddish, it was a way of celebrating her unique identity. See the shit right here? It's a whole fuck. Like, I believe you. Yeah, she had the rabbis and everything there. Shout out to Tiffany. Um, Love. why was Adele wearing that head wrap? What the fuck's going on? Exactly. What's going on, yo? Why are all you brothers trying to turn your 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 your, your, your Nubian white queens into black women, yo? What's wait, going wait, on? Wait, why can't that she wear her hair like fire. that? Oh yeah, it with the look Cuban fire. link too, nice the looking. earrings like she's killing it. She, that do look fire. Like she, she's like she got Chandler and Jill Scott and Erica Badu. 
and Aunt Jemima. Like she's giving. <laughs> yeah. She do a little, look like I want to pour on some pancakes. Okay, Adele. She's giving like she's giving like that 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 but that energy that sugar festival energy. She's I don't been know if you've ever been to the sugar water festival. You never been to the sugar water festival? I did. Sugar? No, you wasn't. Sugar water. Festival. I did. <laughs> you did for real? Yeah. With Erica Badu, Jill Scott, yes. Flo Tree, and Queen Latifah. With well, Flo Tree wasn't there that year, but I she did had go. Chill out, yeah, it? I've been to mad sugar water festival shows. I have gone to sugar water festival. <laughs> giving sugar water festival. Energy. She looked Let's like see that middle pick. It's Jill Scott, Erica Badu, Adele, Queen Latifah. Bong. That's, sugar- that would be an amazing Come headlining on, group for Sugar Water Come Festival. On, man. Did you ever go to Sugar Water Festival, Taylor? Probably not. Nah. Taylor just wants the sugar. Fuck the water. <laughs> yo, Listen to me, yo. Let me guy? tell y'all something right now. Let me tell you something yo, right now. What's going on? What's going on right now? I'm gonna tell you something. If, 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 listen, to, listen. I'm not gonna, gonna, if we're gonna and, talk and, about and, sugar, we're gonna talk about my pussy being sugar then. We're not gonna talk about how I want to talk Oh, that's why you need a bonnet stack, because you baking shit up in there, yo. Get out of here. That's gross. Why is she talking about her pussy? That was disgusting, Exactly. Now y'all want to talk about shit. You're a little sister. Don't talk about your pussy, yo. That's disgusting. Now let's talk about Adele. That little salt and vinegar clit. Nobody (laughs) want to hear about that shit. Talking about sugar. You know what I'm saying? Yo, ew. Taylor, ew. Listen. Taylor, ew. You know what the Adele thing reminds me of? Ew. The Adele thing reminds me of. You got the white cheddar dust coming off (laughs) (laughs) you. And she ain't even say that disgusting. shit with no confidence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how I said it. It's not like you just failed a guy. That is how you said it. That is how you said it. It definitely sounds like you failed a sobriety test. Point your finger to your nose, Taylor. Right now. For what? <laughs> like this. Yeah. <laughs> that shit is kind of hard. I thought, hold on. Oh, no, I got it. Talk about my... <laughs> Can Yo, you do talk it? Talk about my... Taste, 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 taste. Yo, if you bend your elbow... I'm singing like... I don't talk like Chris Christie. My put... <laughs> <laughs> Did he did he come on? Did he, did he come on? That's funny. Did he come on the Daily Show? Sorry. Did no. Chris he come on? Yeah, or not? he was supposed to be there today, but him and Taylor couldn't be in the building. Yo, Charlemagne, Charlemagne. Something about something about fire marshals and shit. Like, You're projecting a lot. Some type of regulation. You're projecting a lot. Oh my god, bro. Oh my god. God. Taylor hated on me, yo. What happened? Because you got no fucking, you can't grow a beard. Stop being mad at me for it. Stop projecting. Okay, I'll quit. All right. <laughs> nah, that shit is funny. Keep going. Adele Badu. <laughs> I, I was like, no, you not smoking. <laughs> no, oh, no, no, no oh, beam, no beam. Oh, shit. That's Charlotte taking a shot. I know, I know. Oh, shit. What happened? What happened? Oh, what happened? Oh, I missed it. Oh, shit. I missed it. Oh, I heard it. Oh, I heard it. Alex, I know you're not talking. <laughs> God damn. What does his beard look like? I am like? not doing this. What does Yo, his beard look stop. like, bro? <laughs> <laughs> what you doing? Not in my house. Yo, what? Not in my house. Y'all are acting good. Not in my house. Y'all are acting good. Don't let us record it. Night time. Y'all are acting good. Don't let us record it. Don't let us. What is happening? Don't let us, then. What do you mean we doing the pod? We potting, baby. Brilliant is podcast. Y'all are acting different. We potted. We just potted. Yo, don't be belligerent. Don't be belligerent, Taylor. Everybody's talking about this Adele picture because I think that Jonathan Majors, huh? Necklace. Let him be. Let him be great. Can you let him be? Why you let him be cute, yo? Listen, you got something to say about everybody. Exactly. Jonathan, (laughs) did you see what Jonathan Majors told his ex girlfriend? A duck. (laughs) (laughs) Y'all are ass. No, he wouldn't did, say did that. You <laughs> did you see what he said? He said he wanted. He said he wanted his ex to act like Coretta Scott King and Michelle Obama. Ooh. You didn't see that in court. Respect. In the ongoing misdemeanor. What does that even mean? That commenced on Monday, the actor's ex girlfriend and alleged victim, Grace Jabari, asserted that the 34 year old insisted that she behaved more like former First Lady Michelle Obama or civil rights icon Coretta Scott King. What do you think when you hear that, Schultz? I think. Is this a snow bunny? Yeah. White woman, yeah. that's what makes it, now here's the comedy. <laughs> now you see the comedy. It's not funny because of the situation. 
But this is com there's some comedy in here. I had no clue that he was dating a snow bunny. Really? White woman. Did he put his hands on a snow bunny? Oh my White woman. Gosh. Allegedly. Allegedly. Is Allegedly. that why the black community is so quick to forgive him for what happens? Um, well, I tell you what, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Why he's smiling. Yeah, no, 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 no. Here's, no, no, no. I said tell that. Why he's smiling. I said that. Said this. I go, that thought my kid is so quick to forgive him. And she just goes. But here's, <laughs> but here's the thing. We don't, we're, there's nothing to forgive because you're innocent it's until proven guilty. It's an allegation. It's an allegation. You know what I mean? It's an allegation. It's an allegation. I think, I mean, it's an allegation. I think that him. When I when I saw this, what I thought to myself was a lot of was, allegations these days, man. A lot of allegations. If you want, if you're a black man who's dating a white woman, mm. and you want your white woman to be like Coretta Scott King or Michelle Obama, who do you think you are? <laughs> but what does that mean, even, <laughs> to be like Michelle Obama? I mean, classy, or Scott for, you know, classy, elegant. You know what I mean? Is that what he means by it? That's what I think. That's what I think. Classy, elegant. Because Coretta Scott was ride or die. Definitely was ride or die. Ride or die. Ride or die. Coretta told the FBI, go ahead and put the old tapes out of my husband mm. and his infidelities because this movement is bigger than my marriage. Mm. Ooh. Ride or die. So is that, is he like, yo, why don't you be a little bit more ride or die? And then what would he be riding or dying with Michelle about? Because Barack hasn't had any infidelities. I think now we know why he dresses right? like a civil rights activist. Who? Jonathan Majors. Like when you see Jonathan Majors, all, all his pictures look like they should be in black and white. <laughs> You know what I mean? That's fact. So I think that if he sees a woman and he wants his ex-girlfriend who's white to be more like those women, it's because he sees himself in that civil rights activist air. He has the face for it. He definitely has a face for it. Salute to Jonathan, though. Uh, make sure you go listen to Broke Down Profits on Audible. Is he in that? Yes, it's the latest release from uh, Kevin Hart and I's production company, SBH Productions. Um, we did it, we, I mean, it was done so long ago, but it's uh, Jonathan Majors, Brian Tyree Henry, Dasha Polanco, Donnell Rollins is in it, and it's written oh. by my man S.A. Cosby, who the New York Times said is one of the authors of the year. Everybody loves S.A. Cosby's books. He wrote uh, Razor Blade Tears. Everybody loves that. That's getting, that got picked up. That's getting done by, uh, uh, um, God, what's the famous producer's name? Well, I can't remember right now. Weinstein? Shut up. <laughs> Yo. Shut up, man. What is wrong with y'all today? What is, what's up, man? Y'all extra silly tonight. I mean, for no reason. Y'all are extra silly like, tonight. Like, why? Like, this what is, is the reason for that shit? Go to the next topic. Jerry Taylor. Bruckheimer. Oh, wow. That's yeah, a big Jerry one. Bruckheimer is doing Razor Blade Tears and Paramount. Yeah, Paramount Players won the rights to S.A. Cosby's book, uh, Razor Blade Tears. He has another book called All the Sinners Bleed. Vulture just named that one of the books of the year. S.A. Cosby is really, really dope, man. Great guy. Now, Taylor... What else do we have for memes that you won't care about next week? Come on, Taylor. Um, I have a Come question on. for y'all. Come on. You know Answer both. this question. Okay. Taylor's type clicked on which doesn't belong. Because this was... Um... Can y'all answer this? Mother asked the internet for help on her first grader's confusing homework assignment. Which word is the odd one out? Friend, egg, toothbrush, desk, silver. I think it's friend because... What, what is it? So my six-year-old daughter, who's in year one, got this homework question. It's confusing, in my opinion, to say the least, especially considering the age it's aimed at. But I'd love to hear your answers. Man, y'all don't be having nothing better to do, y'all. Y'all get on the internet and this is the type of shit y'all do, y'all. Yeah, friend. The same it's friend, yeah, right? It's friend. Obviously, yeah. Clearly a friend. The other ones are objects. Objects, duh. And then friend is a person. I would. I mean, I think I got through all... Uh, what did you say it was, Taylor? I said friend. I think I got through You did not say friend. Yes, I did. What did she say? I thought she said silver. Did you say silver? Which one I was about to say All they got to do is rewind, Taylor. Which one did you say I don't belong? I said friend. Yes, friend. I didn't believe you. She did say friend. She did say friend? She did say friend. Oh, okay. What's I heard up? You Thank you for being yo, a friend. Press him. Press him, yo. He's really upset about that beard. Yeah, I am not upset about the beard are, topic. I'm upset about your you I'm upset about your mama sorority hating on me. Oh, That's yeah, what I'm really upset about. Okay? Let's get to it. Your mama sorority hating on me because your mama love giving me her pie. Relax. Wait, what happened and they're gonna have the nerve. Yo, the sorority gonna talk about, yo, <laughs> tell Charlemagne, get in line. Yeah. We've been exactly eating her mama's pie. <laughs> that's exactly you know what I'm saying? That's you know what I'm saying? That's what you said. I hate that you say that. And her mama's pie. a Zeta. <laughs> 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 you know what I'm saying? Wait, what's wait, that wait, supposed to mean? What is that supposed to mean? Yeah, what's that supposed to mean? Is that the sorority? Yes. 
but what is that no. supposed to mean? It's I don't want no smoke, yo. Leave me alone, yo. But are the women I'm in tired. They no, literally my mom was like, tell Charlemagne to um that my Zeta sisters are annoyed with him for blasting it like he's been here. <laughs> like for real, for real. Really? <laughs> But why, uh, yo, why? shout out to yo mama. Shout out to Mama Hayes. Thank oh you for God. the pie. Zeta's relax. Okay. They're going to be so mad. But, but no, but why, why would they tell your mama something like that? I ain't, ne- y'all ain't never, yo, Zeta's, y'all ain't never struck me as player haters, yo. Wow. Okay, unless it's against the AKAs. But other than that, y'all ain't never struck me as haters. Why y'all going to hate on me for? Because Taylor Mama like to give me that pie. Stop. <laughs> Why do you say Stop. that? Why do you say that? Because I swear to God, my dad's going to punch you in your For throat. For what? For what? Stop talking it, like we that. Did, why, do, why are you making it something else? We're talking about... No doubt. How else pie. am I supposed to say that? No doubt. Taylor's mama gives me her pie. <laughs> she loves giving me her pie. Show me. <laughs> when I eat her pie. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go, we go, we go. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> I hate y'all. And I love eating you too. Yo, <laughs> I love That's eating good. her pie so much because it's because why? It's moist. Yo, I'm some real shit. Sugary. I, I cannot wait. It's sugary. Very I sweet. cannot very wait. Sweet. Very sweet. Very sweet. Very sweet. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I don't even, Yo, can't look wait at that. Look at that. Look because at this. I'm There's about to, behind that look. She make them for Christmas. She don't make them for Christmas. Be- you think you're about to get some? No. Wait, what? <laughs> you see, yo, I yo, swear. Taylor, mama, you going to get me some? <laughs> Taylor said I can't that, get some. That was all you. I know, I know, I know. Mama Hayes, Taylor said I can't get some. I'm going to pie. I want some. Mama Hayes, I'll take some more for Christmas, Mama Hayes. I swear to God. If you enjoy me eating it, Mama Hayes, please. Feel free. I mean, can you imagine like I'll leave forty dollars on the on your on your um <laughs> on cash the app. first of all. I said cash app. Ain't she selling pies now? You the one told me that. Yeah. So are you mad because I want to pay her? Hold on. She is a be no pie $40. business, <laughs> and you're I'm making disrupting. Her, I'm the making success. her. You know what I'm saying? I'm making. I'm making her start one because she be acting like she don't. Want oh, so we all can eat your mama's pie. On oh, some real shit, I'm about to knock all y'all out. Stop Why? Playing. Why? You wanna, you, do you Stop. want us to eat your mama's pie now? <laughs> Why do you? This don't make no sense. Why do you, can y'all say what the pie? Can you, you say what the pie is? Sweet potato pie. Stop saying pie like sexually. Well, maybe she wants to go outside of just sweet potato. Maybe she wants to sell that pie. That's right. Mm. I'm just saying, That's like right. on some real shit. Stop. Sure, it sounds delicious. And I just want to let y'all know, I'm not sharing with y'all. I want the pie to myself. <laughs> I, mean, say, I was the same way. I want the pie to myself. <laughs> Let me tell you something, man. Oh, Taylor's. You know, Taylor's Taylor, Taylor, Mama Hayes gave me that pie. Yeah. And it was on the counter Uh, in the Breakfast Club studio. And it was in a ShopRite grocery bag. Oh, no. And man, Taylor busted that shit open, right? Taylor busted her Taylor busted her mom's pie. What am I even listening to? Yo, Taylor busted her mom's pie open. And I just stared at the pie for a minute, like, Mm, God damn, that's a pretty pie. And like, all the dudes in the room was like, yo, I wanna eat some of that pie. Some of the ladies was like, yo, one of the ladies had her own pie, Sim Seema. Sim Seema had her own pie. From Taylor's mom? From Taylor's mom. Still wanted to eat more Taylor mom. Mom's pie. Come Damn. on, yo. Damn, she want a second? <laughs> this sounds like a successful a business, yo. That's right. This sounds like a successful business. Your, your mom got, can make a lot of money selling that pie. Your mama got bottomless pie, Taylor. <laughs> Taylor's huh. mama got bottomless pie. I wonder how the same energy when you meet her husband. That's all I'm saying. Because you I'm actually gonna give had him discussion. That, but I'm gonna say, yo, yo, He's dang. the first person who had her pie. No, he locked no, it down. No, he is. Why you think he married her? Because she got the sweetest pie. Smart ass, smart ass intelligent human. You are the smartest man. He's a genius. He's the smartest man in Lower Darby. For real, he's a genius. Smartest the man in the world. That's genius. Because he get that pie whenever he wants. Yeah, whenever he wants. Yeah, he All that. season. We got to wait for Christmas I gotta and Thanksgiving. I got to wait seasonal. <laughs> I get it when it's seasonal. <laughs> Your dad gets it all year round. <sighs> I hate you. Why are you sitting like that? <laughs> I don't fucking know, man. It's nine o'clock at night. Why are we Yo, even here? Come on. Okay, I've been working since but five in the morning. It's fun. It's fun. <laughs> Listen, Ashanti and Nelly are expecting congratulations. Hey, uh, oh, allegedly, shit. you didn't know that? No. Yeah, well, what man. do you think about this video? Because I feel like they didn't necessarily oh, come out and say it. What so, do you mean? Watch. Baby on the way, man. Bills to pay. How come it's not? Who's that Shanti, man? Shanti's so fly. How come? Shanti's so dope. 
Ashanti got good energy too, man. She got a good spirit. If you really pay attention to Ashanti, Ashanti stays out the way. Ashanti don't bother nobody. Ashanti is only in drama when people bring her into drama. The most drama Ashanti has ever had in her whole career is anytime Irv Gotti does an interview. <laughs> you know yeah, what I'm saying? Fuck. Other than that, Ashanti don't bother nobody. She stays out the way. She minds her motherfucking business, man. I respect it so much, man. Salute to Ashanti. I hope. Uh, if it's true what they're saying and she's pregnant from Nelly, I hope she has a healthy pregnancy and I hope she has a healthy delivery, man. Beautiful. Salute to you, Ashante. And get that ring. What was that video you just showed us and why, Taylor? <laughs> what she said? She said, and get that ring. Because. I was talking about this earlier. What if you don't want to get married? He's projecting. Stop yeah, projecting. I understand that. I understand Are you projecting? That. Stop projecting. You don't know I'm, what Ashante no, wants. Not just, I mean, it might be a projection, whatever. But I'm just saying, traditionally, <laughs> I would want to be preg or be married and then have a baby. Nikki Haley wants to get rid of TikTok. How y'all feel about that? Let's hear what Nikki had to say about this. See how many followers she got. Okay. We really do need to ban TikTok once and for all. And let me tell you why. For every 30 minutes that someone watches TikTok every day, they become 17% more anti-Semitic, more pro-Hamas based on doing that. We I don't have TikTok. <laughs> TikTok's fun. I don't have TikTok. What do you think about that statement, Shotzi? She looked like she banned her lips. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> did, did she do that? <laughs> did she ban her lips? I see her lips. Nah, stop playing, yo. Nah, she got lips. Yeah, Come what on, are you talking yo. about? Nah, they got, she, got, she got lips. Uh, I mean, they're not Kylie she Jenner. She don't have the front, the, the top front lip. part? She don't have the top lip. I mean, that's fifty percent. Fifty percent of what? Of the, the lips. Top joint? Yeah. You don't you don't follow Nikki Haley on Twitter? I just don't understand how she came up with that stat. Like, what? Who's who's doing? Who's the statistician that came up with that shit? Yeah. Like, if you stay on TikTok for thirty minutes, you become seventeen percent more anti-Semitic. That doesn't make any sense. It makes zero sense whatsoever. And does it keep increasing like that? Yeah. If you stay for sixty, does it go up to thirty-four? You know what I mean? Get your calculator out, Taylor. I can't go past thirty-four. 17 times two is all I got. <laughs> I'm not I wanted to keep here. going. I wanted to <laughs> keep going. My point is, if you're on there for two hours, it's over. If you're on there for two hours, bro, you full blown Nazi. Whoa. Crazy. Crazy. Whoa. Crazy. Crazy. You're all bad at math. Why? Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's, a, it's a little over two. It's half. a 17. It's, no, it's not it's, even that. It's, it's a 17% it's, increase every single time. But don't matter. We're brilliant idiots. So we don't care about it. <laughs> you give My point fuck. is, fuck. Nikki Haley's trying to ban TikTok. How do you feel about that, bro? You're not on TikTok. I don't give a fuck about TikTok. You don't I know what's going on. That's over not there? the first person I've heard say ban TikTok because they say TikTok is Chinese spyware. I mean, mm. it's. It is. All of this shit is somebody's spyware. Like Facebook and Instagram is All our spyware. It. It's more about like influencing culture. I think that's what it is. Like we influence culture around the world with our social media. Do right? we? Of course. I it's, don't know, man. I'm no, I'm saying to wonder. A, that's a fact. I'm st but in China, they don't even let their kids see the shit. Their algorithm is totally different in China. I know. Like they let them see like stuff that's educational and things I, they can learn I from. I made this up on this podcast to you and then it went viral. And that's why all these people are like, we got to cancel TikTok. You don't remember uh, it's doing this in the old studio? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's the reason? Yeah. So nah, I that place where up. you heard it from? You heard it? Yeah. <laughs> Remember when you were just like, I heard they from me. Really? Yeah. But I also made that but up. But Trump said that shit too. That everybody took it and ran with yeah. it. But then it turned out to be right. But I was just a hunch. So you Taylor Swift TikTok? I think so. What does that mean? You, you did the same shit with Taylor. Andrew was ahead of the curve on the conversation. So what, did Taylor Taylor do? what did Taylor do? You, oh, yeah. you created the Taylor you Swift did. Beyonce you did. versus. That was not happening. <laughs> People were just having a conversation about both of them being on tour, breaking records. You came in here one day and you created the Taylor Swift versus Beyonce. Now, every single time they mention Taylor anywhere, they say something about Beyonce not being, being, doing the things she's doing, basically. Beyonce's out movie comes out this weekend, last weekend. She and they're going to compare the numbers. No, it came out last weekend. Oh, shit. She did 21 million, number one movie in the country. Great feat in this era. But Taylor did 92 million. Now, I was watching Fox or something, and the guy was just like, he was, he was talking about Taylor and how Taylor did 92 million. No, he was talking about Beyonce and how Beyonce did 21 million. And he goes, 
But Taylor Swift did 92. Just randomly. I'm like, wasn't even about shit. the conversation. You could talk about them independently. That's what I'm saying. Why you, do you have to compare them? You, Yo, it's your shut fault. The fuck up. You called this show. Yo, you don't you want to know something fucked up? I literally put Taylor Swift in the Beyonce conversation single-handedly. Like nobody was doing that before I did. We we're at the same restaurant the other night eating. She don't send over a bottle of wine, come over, say thank you. What restaurant was y'all in? It's called Paros. People knew she was in there? Yeah. It wasn't Mad Paps and everybody outside? No, actually, which is quite really? interesting. Yeah. Really? Who was she with? Travis Kelsey. No, I was looking for Travis now. Interestingly But you enough, could come over and say hello for this, like, you know, massive career boost I've given her. She might have thought she was a scooter. <laughs> <laughs> Dub with you, she probably thought Dub was a scooter. <laughs> <laughs> yo, free Scooter, Taylor, stop stop bullying Scooter, yo. I'm going to have a real conversation with you about yo, that. Yo, uh, Taylor, I had another thought about Taylor, and it slipped my mind just that fucking fast, yo. Does she look like Mark Gagnon? Exactly. She definitely looks like Mark Gagnon. <laughs> right well, Mark here. looks like her. And by the way, that is not a diss to Taylor Swift because Mark Gagnon is a it's beautiful a pretty human. dude. He's beautiful. beautiful. He's a pretty dude. I can't even call him a dude. I don't know. He's a pretty <laughs> human. He's an angel. He's a pretty human, yo. We don't, who, who can confirm Mark is actually a guy, yo? <sighs> He got a girl. I know, he's he got married. a wife. What's that mean? He might be a lesbian. Oh, my God. <laughs> Mark too beautiful, man. There's no way Yo, Mark is full his blown. Beard, yeah, his beard do God. look a little lesbian that yeah. grows it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? It does look a little. Oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> Mark is beautiful, yo. I'm going to be honest. You can't tell me that's not Mark. I'm going to be honest. Mark might be Taylor Swift. <laughs> Yeah. Mark might be prettier than Taylor. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, sure. and Taylor I, can't, I can't go there. Yeah, I know. Go Taylor, on, I can't son. go there, bro. He's like, Taylor, nah, Taylor's he, a cool you can't look at your friend like that. That's Taylor, why. <laughs> can't go there, bro, bro. Bro, I don't know, man. It's two different levels of pretty. It's How two different. Pretty he looks right. Mark is beautiful. No, look at this man, yo. Bro. Look at this man, yo. Come on, man. You know how they, what's that mean when it said who? Uh, would your face oh, card? God what face card don't decline? Yeah. Mark's face card don't decline. Don't decline. Straight up, Mark is Mark. Mark has got the black. Black card of faces. I'll give him this. He got black it. card of faces. <laughs> black card faces. He got a better body though. Mark? Yeah, he's built more right. Really? Oh, he got a thing on him, bro. You remember his kicks? His ki Oh yeah, Mark. Do oh, you right? Mark like Jesus, man. He got that Jesus. He might have that Jesus, yo. But but the thing on him, I think he has that Taylor doesn't have. Yeah, no, he's stacked. He's stacked. He's stacked. Mark stacked. stacked. Mark he got stacked. you beat easy. With what? Ass. Everybody got Taylor. I mean, Easy. Taylor. Beat. Ass. Not Taylor Wagon. Swift. Our Taylor. Everybody. Wagon. Yeah, Taylor. Yeah. You know how to make a move, though? No. You ain't how never you seen know? him off twerk. Don't insult that, man. Yeah. Don't, don't have somebody else embarrass you in here. Show beat facts. you in racing. Yo. Mark will beat you in a twerk off. Cut you it out. Not, don't ask for the smoke. Cut it off. Oh, you setting us back, right Taylor. Now. Come on. I'll call Mark over right now. Call Mark the Stallion over here, man. Yo, let me see if yeah. Mark's still here. Yeah. Call Mark over here. Let him walk in the room and wake me the fuck up. Let me see if Mark. You know what I'm saying? We are calling him Mark the Stallion, bro. You know what I'm saying? Marcus the Stallion. Marcus the fucking Stallion. Tell Mark come in here face. and wake me the fuck up. Jesus. Come on, man. Mark gagging on. God even gave him a great last name. Whatever you are, Mark, gagging motherfuckers be what? gagging on. Whether it's a dick, <laughs> a vagina, whatever it is, Mark. Shout out to Mark. Yeah, son. Did you come on? Let's pay some bills, man. <laughs> Taylor, what do we got? Let's pay some bills. Oh, you saying something? Yeah. You want to do that one? I got to. Which yeah. one is it? Hold Skylight on. Frames. Oh, I love that. God damn, Taylor, we got all these fucking ads? Yeah. Let me stop complaining. God is good. God is good. God is good. All the time. I know that. God, my God, God is good. Uh. God, my God, God is good. Uh. I know that he... Hold on. <laughs> All right, guys, let's take a break for a second because, listen, holiday shopping stresses you out and you're looking for a perfect no-fail gift to give. We know you are. I'm telling you right now, let's make it easy, but let's make it good. This is a gift that is so easy to gift, and everyone will think you spent hours personalizing this Skylight digital picture frame. Skylight is a touchscreen photo frame that you can send photos to straight from your phone and they appear in seconds. You can even preload the photos before the box is open so that when it's unwrapped and the person opens up this frame, bow, pictures, 
of you, pictures of them, pictures of something absolutely hilarious. It is a beautiful gift, but also a prank if you want it to be. If your friend is having an amazing, beautiful party with important people at their home, Switch out the picture to something with nudity. I think that's a great prank to play. There are many others that you can do. The Skylight Digital Picture Frame is a great private way to share photos without posting it to social media and the world, especially for parents who don't always want their photos of their children everywhere. We are confident that you love Skylight, okay? So what we're going to do right now is they're going to offer you a free 120-day return policy. Think Ooh. about that. 120 days, free return policy. The Skylight Digital Picture Frame has over 1 million happy customers, thousands of five-star reviews, and is available in over 30 countries. Skylight Digital Picture Frame has been recommended by the Today Show, Forbes, New York Mag, and more. And as a special limited time offer for our listeners, get $15 off your purchase of a Skylight Frame when you go to skylightframe.com slash idiots. To get $15 off the purchase of a Skylight Frame, just go to skylightframe.com slash idiots. That is S-K-Y-L-I-G-H-T-F-R-A-M-E.com slash idiots. Idiots. That's right. And it's also the Brilliant Idiots today is also brought to you by DoorDash. Uh. Man, salute to DoorDash. Everybody loves DoorDash. Uh. Everybody has a DoorDash account. If you don't have a DoorDash account, you need to get one, okay? Because DoorDash realizes that everyone deserves to feel like a VIP. And with Dash Pass from DoorDash, you can do just that. Dash Pass members get $0 delivery fees and up to 10% off eligible DoorDash orders, including groceries, drinks, personal care items, and more. Sign up for Dash Pass today. Use code IDIOTS and get 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $12 or more after signing up for Dash Pass. Subject to change, terms apply. Dash Pass makes delivery even more worth it, helping members save more and $35 per month on average. Plus, Dash Pass delivers way more than just tonight's dinner, including special access to experiences, promotions, and Dash Pass exclusive menu items, all for only $9.99 a month, all right? Sign up for Dash Pass now, and you'll get your first month free. Put a little joy back into your schedule. Sign up for Dash Pass today. Use code IDIOTS and get 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $12 or more after signing up for Dash Pass. Subject to change. Terms apply. That's 50% off. $10 $10 value when you spend $12 or more after signing up for Dash Pass with code IDIOTS. Subject to change, terms apply. Sign up for more. Become a Dash Pass member today. Let's get back to the show. Church announcements, Schultz. Church announcements. Yo, um... Yo, congratulations. You sold out the fucking forum in L.A. Thank you, my G. You know thank what I'm saying? You, Motherfucking you, big show. Thank not you, the fucking G. little one. Thank Stop you. playing with him. We're doing all right out here. And uh, we just announced the Life Tour, uh, the American Life Tour, just went up on sale. I don't know when this is coming out. So what are you on? What you been on? What is the garden in the forum? Well, I had to announce the garden in the forum first, and now we had to announce, gotcha. you know... Uh, we, I think, announced like 15 more shows, so make sure you go check that out. Uh, if there are tickets left, you get them at theandrewschultz.com. Um, yeah, we got Miami, Austin, Charlotte, Atlanta, Boston, uh, uh, Chicago, Nashville, Phoenix, San Francisco. Um, I'm probably forgetting some, but make sure you go to theandrewschultz.com. Get those tickets while you still can. How do we break fucking records, yo? How do we break records? I That's remember the goal, telling you, man. I remember telling you on this podcast some years ago that one day you were going to be the biggest stand-up touring comedian in the world. I was saying, I was looking at the guy, Russell Peters. Peters. Russell Peters, a legend. And I was like, yo, you're going to be doing that. How do we get that? How is it that we look a year from now and it says Andrew Schultz, number one touring comedian of 2024? How do we make that happen? I think we just keep on delivering great shows. Got like you. This, this, uh, this is the hour I'm most proud of creating in my entire life. Really? Yeah. So it's, it's. I'm very excited about this one. You know, because I've never been personal in my life, in, in my comedy, because I'd never thought I had anything interesting to share about like my personal life. I thought it was boring. interesting. And uh, about a year ago, I started going through something that was definitely. Uh, Worth sharing. So I'm, yeah, and then crafted the hour about that. So it's so about. funny. I remember seeing, I was reading some review about you and somebody they, somebody said something similar to that. They were like, I, I think it was after the show Saves America. Mm. And they were saying how funny it was and how great it was. They just wish you had got, they, wish they, you, they knew more about you. Yeah, yeah. I remember seeing that. So you're giving it to them. Yeah, I think it just has to be natural. Like it has to be, 
you know, you have to, at least for me as a comic, like you got to reflect what you're going through, you yeah. know? And like, uh, yeah, it was just- You can't force it. You can't force it. It's got to, And you also have to evolve. Like I think sometimes <laughs> comics can, can start doing impressions of themselves without even realizing. And I never want to be that. I always yeah. want to be doing something different. And I always want to be it. pushing the art somewhere. Yeah. So. You don't want to be a character to yourself. Exactly. So yeah, so I'm, I'm fucking hyped on this and the people are excited. And I think it's just putting together great shows and having shows that people tell their friends about. And, you know, they, they ideally tell their friends like, yo, you cannot miss this when it comes into your town. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, it's just people going, I need to be there. Like, they have to see you, think you're yeah. funny, and then want to be there. And it's easy for people to get caught up in what works for them. So to hear you say, nah, man. Oh, the, I, yeah, I believe in the opposite. Yeah. I, you should make yourself nervous. You should push yourself into those places. Yeah. yeah. Get like, uncomfortable. That's always been, at least for me, is like putting out stand-up, you know, originally. You know, then I did that crowd work special. I was like, all right, let me just try this thing. That became a big trend in comedy. Then going to Europe and doing the the shows out there that's that right. we filmed and we did that, like that's putting right. that special out. Like that's right. even doing the Schultz Saves America thing, I had never done that. You know what I mean? Like I just never done like straight to camera, no audience rants. But I think that's how you got to stay fresh. And I also think that's how you respect your audience. Like they got to grow at you. Absolutely. Like you look at all these people who have had careers, like they're around for decades. They're constantly evolving and changing. Not and, a pivot. Yeah, I mean, look at even guys like in music, Jay-Z. You look at Drake. You look at the guys who like are making different types of music and reflecting their life. Because your audience wants to grow with you. If you keep trying to satisfy the audience at the age they were when you started. It's weird. It's you're, authentic. you're the one, what they what they call that shit stuck in um past. No, not stuck in the past, but it's something they call it something. Molasses? Like frozen, huh? You're stuck in molasses or something like that? Molasses. What? Yo, you know what's so crazy? Somebody, <laughs> I'm so traumatized by this shit. <laughs> Listen, today we're at the Daily Show. Cameraman goes, yo, show me why you ain't help Maddie. You couldn't even. You I'm said, like, what? you almost fucking got me. You, you almost that. fucking got me. Until my dumb ass realized the cameraman, Maddie, fell yesterday <laughs> during the show. <laughs> I'm like, bro, my bad, man. I was like, Maddie. I was like, what, Maddie nuts, huh? I'm, and I'm, you know what I'm saying? And I'm saying it to him like, what, Maddie's nuts? Maddie's nuts. He probably thought I was an asshole. <laughs> and I, I went to the desk and I thought about it. I was like, Yo, you wasn't trying to get me back. You fell yesterday. <laughs> but no, to your point, I don't even know what the fuck you was talking about. I'm so yeah. goddamn tired. No, you, we you were talking were, about you doing. No, you were talking about the gift wrapping. No, I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely was not talking about gift wrapping. I'm not talking well, about gift wrapping. He starts to realize what he is. It takes him a second, and then he goes. <laughs> listen, I want everybody to go uh, listen to Broke Down Profits on Audible. It is the latest release from me and Kevin Hart's company, SBH Productions. It's written by S.A. Cosby. You know S.A. S. Uh, S. A. Cosby, phenomenal author. Stars Brian Tyree Henry, Donnell Rollins, Dasha Polanco, Jonathan Majors. Go listen to it right now on Audible. Make sure you also go listen to Unleash for Love from my good sister, Alicia Renee. That is out on Audible right now. And go listen to Summer 85. That's out on Audible. And find it Tamika. All of that is out on Audible. Go listen to all SBH Productions' work on Audible, man. Thank you. What else we got, Taylor Gang? Oh, and go get my man Doug Melville's book, Invisible Generals. That's uh, the latest release from my book imprint, Black Privilege Publishing with Simon & Schuster. What else we got, Taylor Gang? We got to turn the, the heat off. It's hot as a motherfucker. I told you. I thought it was just Taylor. Huh. What else we got, yo? Oh, I think I'm hot. Okay. <laughs> Um, Kyle Raho, whoa, whoa. Let's go scroll up a little bit. Scroll up, Taylor. You know what? Colorado. Oh, yeah. Well, first of all, I want to salute the Usher because Usher broke down in tears. He wraps his Vegas residency. Phenomenal. If you didn't get to see Usher's Vegas residency, you missed yeah. out. Next time you're going to see him is at the Super Bowl. Usher, I really need you to bring the scripper pole to the Super Bowl. That scripper pole that you bring out on stage in Vegas at your residency, please, I'm begging you. I'm begging you. Bring it to the Super Bowl <laughs> stage, please. What a year for him. Yeah. Damn, bro. I'm never going to forget it. <laughs> Ain't nobody drink water more angry than him. I'm never going to forget <laughs> Right? <laughs> like, it's a punishment. <laughs> what the fuck was that about? I'm never... <laughs> that... I'm, I'm, 
Why are you taking it out on the water, bro? Just have a sip. <laughs> what the fuck? The bottle got to get squished every single time. Like, bro. Yo, I stay ready so I have to get ready, bro. Seems like You know it. what I'm saying? <laughs> you never know. I get, you, you never fucking know, yo. Yo. <laughs> I made that shit bust. It's over. It's over. I ain't even putting my mouth in that shit busted. Okay? Y'all ain't preparing for the penis apocalypse. Okay? Well, you, don't know, you, you gotta know how to make it bust yo, before it goes. Y'all ain't y'all, 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 y'all don't be on the y'all don't be on the websites I be on. Y'all, crazy, don't know, bro. y'all don't know about these zombies that's out here trying to make you suck their dick. You ain't heard about that? What? You ain't heard about that. You heard about that? There's this shit going around <laughs> that they said in the future, like the, in the zombie apocalypse, that the zombies are just gonna try to make people suck their cocks. What all right? And the only way to make them stop is to make them bust. Okay? I made it bust without even putting it in my mouth. <laughs> How'd you do it? You just saw it. Rewind the tape. <laughs> so, no, what is going on? Colorado. Rewind the tape. <laughs> talk about Colorado. I'm down to talk about Colorado. Yeah, yeah, let's talk about Colorado. Colorado. Yeah. Let's do that. Let's, let's talk about Colorado, bro. Because whatever we were talking about before, I want to forget we even brought that up. Colorado the band. How you even made that up? What? Where did your brain go? Like, we were just making fun of how violent you drink water. You know what I mean? Like, oh, there's yeah. some fucking dick sucking zombies that are gonna come around and no, gonna make I didn't you suck. Say dick. that I said the zombies want Don't you. Don't he make shit up like a four year old that just learned words? <laughs> like he's like, and then the zombies will come and they're gonna make you suck their dick. And then if you don't do that, you're gonna get stabbed and we have to drive a Range Rover. And then I want pancakes. And then I want <laughs> what is going on? You only got room for the pancakes in your mouth if you don't suck the cock. Okay. Oh, the zombies make you suck the cock. You're going to lose your appetite. Okay. That is a problem, bro. That is a problem. You're not what thinking. What happened at the Daily Show, yo? What they do to him? Yeah, no. Yo, what, what they do to him at the Daily Show, yo? Yo, he's too so, rel- What they do to him at the Daily Show, He got show, himself yo. a little facial. Uh. Afterwards, shout like, out to Brenda. Salute to Brenda. I love Brenda. Brenda's the ultimate makeup the, artist, man. What's yeah. in the product? He's in the Illuminati now. So, so you know, he in the Illuminati. Yeah, I've been so, in the so. Illuminati. Y'all playing with me? <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, we I've been in the Illuminati, <laughs> man. What y'all talking about? What'd you have to do to get in the Illuminati? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, son. <laughs> Come on, son. Come on, son. You got Alex. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yo. <laughs> What is that? Charlotte out here busting on me like, come on, Charlotte. That's the initiation. You want in or you don't want in? You wipe it off, you don't want in. Uh, uh, Wait, 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 excuse me. (laughs) Son. Yo, Yo, what's going on, Taylor? I feel like I'm the only straight person here. Me, I'm straight. (laughs) I'm straight too. What happened to the... Colorado topic. Oh, yeah, God. let's talk about Colorado. Because <laughs> nah. Taylor really wants yeah. to talk about this for some reason. Uh, All right, Taylor, shut set, it up. Up. set it up. Set it up, Taylor. What is it? Taylor, tell her. Taylor, tell her. Taylor, tell her. No, tell her. Tell her. Tell her. Tell her. That's your first topic, you chick. That's the first topic that you put. Taylor, you was like, talk about Colorado. Talk about Colorado. Talk about Colorado. Talk about Colorado. But how do you do that, Taylor? What's the headline? Give it to us. What is it? Colorado to ban fat phobia discrimination. Damn. Say something smart. <laughs> something smart. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Colorado has set to pass a law banning <laughs> discrimination against people who are overweight. The so-called fat phobia law would require employers to offer workplace accommodations for overweight workers. It would also ban what? landlords from turning away renters due to their weight. A similar law was adopted in New York earlier this month. Really? Clearly not. Colorado <laughs> expects the bill to pass sometime next year. I don't understand this. Like, first of all, how would you know somebody's fat phobic? Like, how would you know that a landlord turned you away just because of your weight? I don't like shit like that, yo, because then that means that people who are overweight, who may not necessarily have the credentials to get an apartment or whatever, can blame it on their weight. That's a, it, it, that is an advantage to being fat. You could just blame everything bad that happens to you on people yeah, hating man. you because you're fat. Yeah, man. Damn, the Marvels is now in 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 in. What is the Marvels? The Marvels is Carol Danvers, Monica Rambeau. But it's a woman Marvel and movie. Kamala Khan. Yes, I haven't seen it yet. But what's what's the point of it? <sighs> well, 
The point of it is, it's the sequel to <laughs> no, it's the sequel to Captain Marvel. Oh, and yay! You would have to be watching the Disney Plus shows to understand why Monica Rambeau and Kamala Khan fit into it. The Marvels is now the lowest grossing film in the history of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. After a month in theaters, the film reached its plateau after making 80 million in North America and 197 million globally. The poor showing won't stop the film from running at theaters completely. According to reports, the film will run in theaters through New Year's. I haven't seen it yet, and um, that's a bad sign. Cause y'all know I'm a Marvel guy. Mm -hmm. And but why I, would you go see it? Like, I what is, to, I, I mean, what is the I, story? I've been line? following all of this. I but know. What is the idea? Is it, is it like the view? Like, what do they do? <laughs> They're all. They complain about like Monica what Rambeau is Captain do? Marvel's best friend's daughter. Like, it's all, it all makes sense. Kamala Khan is a super fan of Captain Marvel, and something happens where all of their powers are intertwined, mm. and they all end up like. God damn it. It's almost like their periods was all in sync. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Think how sexist this is. That That's is what I'm good. saying. That I just thought about it. That's crazy. That That's superpowers. crazy. You put that together. God damn, man. The ability man. to bring up old shit for no reason. <laughs> they do. I mean, they all do have their powers, but their powers are intertwined for some reason. But what are some other powers that they have? I know somebody already had to make that joke about it's like women's periods all being insane. It's probably that. But what going, other powers do they have, Charlemagne? I don't think I enough don't people know. saw it to make that joke. What? Huh? <laughs> Not enough people saw it to make that joke. Yo, you might be right. That's <laughs> fucked up, though, man. Marvel's in trouble, yo. Marvel's in trouble. I'm telling you, the only thing that fucked up Marvel was Disney+. Plus. And the reason Marvel fucked up Disney+, Plus is because people aren't invested in the TV shows. If you're watching the TV... Yeah, I can't watch the TV shows and then motherfucking... Movie comes out based on it. Yo. Yo, low-key, yeah. you I know... I remember a time where somebody said, yo, Disney Plus is fucking genius and it's going to take over and it's going to be the best thing. Disney, Disney Plus is killing. No, you said that. It's still killing. You just said what killed this movie is Disney Plus. It killed Plus. Marvel. It killed Marvel. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Marvel. Yeah, but yeah. I th Look, I think part of this, and I think we got to acknowledge, is that Marvel did the perfect... Uh, what is it called? What is it called when you drop an album? Rollout. They did the perfect rollout for, for films. Years. For ten, like, <clears throat> yeah, if they should study this in history. It will yeah. never be done right. to this level again. Never. The sophistication, the success rate, the storytelling, intertwining everything there for ten years. In my opinion, don't continue it. Put it on ice for ten years. And then start it up again with all new actors like they do Batman, like they do Spider-Man, like they do anything. All the stories that we care about are done. We saw the end. We don't need to see the fucking Marvels figure their dumb shit out. Schultz, this I how, sit. This is how I know me and your powers are intertwined because I was sitting at home and I write shit like this out sometimes hmm. just to do it. But if I was working at Marvel, I would have did the same thing. Endgame. Avengers, that whole saga is gone. gone. It's gone for now. So what do you do? The snap happened all throughout the universe, all the different multiverses. I'm going to, they're on Earth 616 now. I'm going to the other Earth. I'm going to the other Earth that they went to in Doctor Strange. And that's how I introduce the mutants and the Fantastic Four and all that Start shit like up. that. Start now, up. now I might have done, and, and by the way, you could go there and introduce life after the snap. Don't worry about how we see life after the snap on Earth 616. Let's go to this other planet, right? And see how the snap affected that Earth. On that other Earth that's in Doctor Strange, you got the Fantastic Four and you got the X-Men. So you go over there, focus on the X-Men for the next five years. Because you know, you know it's not going to be 10 because shit moves Yo, faster now. Low key, we haven't done an X-Men movie for a while. Start that at the beginning. That's that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm, I'm completely agree with you. Go right but to the mutant saga. Leave what you did. You did the perfect That's thing right. in filmmaking. I don't right. even think it was, I think it was longer than 10 years. That was a decade. From the decade. first Iron Man? I think first Iron Man was, look it up, uh, somebody. Nah, One bro. Producers. I might be 20 years. First Iron Man was like two, let me see, it's 2023. First Iron Man probably was like 20, damn. What 2008. Was That's a 15 year run. Shit. Why rush it? Son, you why did just they rush did. to introduce all these new characters and show us they life were chasing after the a snap? bag? Chasing the they fucking were chasing bag. a bag. You chased the bag, you had nothing. What they should have done is put it on ice. Like you said, we haven't had a good X-Men run right. in a minute. Start the X-Men over, do the mutant saga. I like it. The Fantastic Four shit never hit once in anybody's life. If you want to try it, try it. I doubt it hits. Let build out the X-Men shit for the That's next right. 10 years and then. 
You start with Iron Man again, or start no, with a different story. No, 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 story. no, no. You know how I would have started the next saga? What's that? I would have went to the X Men, but in this iteration of of Marvel, Deadpool would have been my Iron Man. You know how Iron Man set it off for the Marvel universe that we see now? Deadpool three would have set it off for the next phase of the mutant saga, which I'm which I'm think they're going to try to do now. Can you start the mutant saga with Deadpool or is the timing off? I think you could because you I want to see early Wolverine again. I want to see early like I guess we got Wolverine. But that's what they're doing lately. in Deadpool 3. Deadpool 3 is Hugh oh, Jackman they, in the yellow Wolverine. That's what I'm yeah. saying. So they could have started it with Deadpool 3, the whole multiverse, all of that shit like that, but just go just and, and, and Deadpool could have been time traveling. They already introduced time travel Don't to the even game. Don't even talk about multiverse. Like, I'm over this multiverse shit. It sucks. There's too many, like, uh, loopholes if you die. But that's the only way to, that's the only way to, to introduce the X-Men in Fantastic Four, and it makes sense. Like, Marvel started doing a lot of goofy shit when they did, like, the Secret Wars and who cares? Just, you don't know who the I, scroll so was doing Endgame. Like, they fucking bro, up bro, the whole shit. You, you need casuals in order to make billions of dollars on movies. The beautiful thing about all these Marvel films is or you could be a complete casual, go to the movie theater, watch it, and you're like, that was an enjoyable experience. I don't need to know anything else about the storyline. With these Marvels, I gotta watch a fucking show about these female superheroes. Maybe I watch it, maybe I don't. It's too much. You have to be too invested. But yeah, you had the Disney Plus, and because of that, they needed stuff to put on there. Of and course, so they just, they could, man. Yeah. Of course. Oh, 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 by the way, they and they rusted. didn't, and they didn't have license for X Men yet. They didn't have like Sony still owned X Men. That's what I'm saying. Uh, Why rush? Like your Marvel is box office, is big budget. So start at the beginning with X Men. We will be right back into. I'm it. with you. But you, have, you would have to do it in another Earth because what would have ended up happening was you go do it in another Earth, the mutants are on this planet. The mutants didn't exist in Earth 616. Mm. They existed on this, on this planet. But the Avengers don't exist on this planet. So by the time you get to the incursions and all that shit, these two planets collide. That's how they end up all together five, seven years from now and they do secret wars. That actually would be fine. That's what they should have did. But they, I don't think they took a beat. They, there's no way they took a beat. Yo, I'll be honest. If I'm restarting X-Men... I make no acknowledgement that it's on a different world. I don't even mention the fact that Marvel or whatever it was called, uh, what do you call them? Or 616? Yeah, I, what, but what are the- Multiverse. The multiverse. No, no, what are they called? Avengers. Avengers. I make no mention of the Avengers at all. It's just X-Men, the mutants. And then when the storyline gets to the point where it needs to converge, then you bring up this multiverse story, right. all this other shit. For a person who's just diving in, it's too confusing. I mean, all these fucking worlds and shit. I don't want to deal with that. Don't educate me on all these things. You're right. I watched that new Spider-Verse movie or whatever. The, the, Fantastic. I, it's 30 minutes in. It's too many different colors and shit. They're going <laughs> to different worlds. This person, I, I, it's too much. You got to watch that shit high, bro. Maybe that's You it. watch that shit high. That shit is Mushrooms so that... or weed? Ooh, I only did it with weed. Mushrooms would be crazy. Especially if you got like the surround sound in your house where you can feel it in your body. That I wish I would have went and saw that in theaters. I did. It was great. That shit, oh my <laughs> God. I hear it's Joe. great, but the first 30 minutes I couldn't get through. And then I apparently after that, you really start getting into the serious story. Mm. Yeah. All I'm saying is, yeah, enough Marvel, with this storyline shit. I can't even think. Like, what about real? Let me think what I really enjoyed from Marvel this go around. I enjoyed Loki. Loki I enjoyed both Loki's. Fantastic. I enjoyed. Uh, couldn't get into it. Uh, I enjoyed the what ifs. I like She-Hulk. A lot of people didn't like She-Hulk. I like She-Hulk. Uh, you ain't fuck with She-Hulk? No. Um, the moment they had Meg Thee Stallion twerking in the episode, I'm like, all right. The thing, with she, the thing with She-Hulk that makes much. it crazy is I don't know why we need She-Hulk right now. It's almost like Marvel's trying to correct shit that they could have just took their time to correct because they got so much flack for the first 10 years for not having no women characters. Mm. So they introduced all these women characters. Every correction is an overcorrection. And now you're not creating from a place of authenticity. You're creating from a place of reactivity. That's real. And when you're creating from a place of reactivity, you're dead. Dead out here. Let's pay some bills, man. Every erection is an erection. Blue Chew shows go. The Chew is the greatest on the planet, okay? I'm telling you right now, <clears throat> if you want to be a Marvel mutant, if you want to be an Avenger, if you want to literally be your girl's end game, the Blue Chew is the one that you got to blow her back out with. Ooh. If you want to send her to another multiverse, Ooh. okay? If you want to merge timelines, if you want to do a wage a secret war on her uterus, you use the Blue 
chew. Same active ingredients as inside Cialis or Viagra. I'm just telling you no right now, but this is a chew. It's one we rock with, and you're going to get your first month free. All you got to do is pay $5 shipping when you go to bluechew.com and use the promo code IDIOTS. What else we got, Charlotte? Rocket money. Thank you, Rocket Money, man. Do you ever feel like money is just flying out of your account and you have no idea where it's going? Well, I know it's all those subscriptions. Think about it. Between streaming services, fitness apps, delivery services, parenting apps, it's endless. I'm guilty of this. So I use Rocket Money to help me find out what subscriptions I'm actually spending money on. It was eye-opening, and I had them cancel the ones I didn't want anymore. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills. I can see all of my subscriptions in one place, and if I see something I don't want, I can cancel it with a tap. I never have to get on the phone with customer service. They'll even try to get you a refund for the last couple of months of wasted money and negotiate the and negotiate to lower your bills for you by up to 20%. All you have to do is take a picture of your bill and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year with over $500, with over $500 million in canceled subscriptions. Let me get that right. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash idiots. That's rocketmoney.com slash idiots. Rocketmoney.com slash idiots. Let's get back to the show. Let's do one more topic and let's get into some asking idiots because motherfuckers is tired in these streets, okay? It's way past my bedtime. It's 9.30 and I keep smelling fucking Asian food. Mm. Is there an Asian restaurant around here or something? I would love that. It's not? No. Oh, where the fuck is that smell coming from? What did that say? On. Ricky Smiley does what? Ricky Smiley slams grown men who call roadside assistance for flat tire. Recently, Ricky Smiley revealed how he feels about men using roadside assistance instead of changing their own tires. Smiley said grown men calling roadside assistance for a flat tire is sassy as fuck. Well, I am sassy Santana then. Because <laughs> if I get a motherfucking flat tire, I'm calling roadside assistance, especially depending on where I'm at. Because, you know, when you be on the side of the motherfucking highway and you get out to try to change a flat tire, I done thought way too many times and heard way too many stories of motherfuckers getting blindsided. You know what I'm saying? Getting hit by cars, especially depending on what time of day it is. So I am sassy Santana, Ricky Smiley. Okay. Yeah, uh, one person said 20 minutes after tire changes, hands cleaned, and back on the road. These are the things a man of my era learned, as well as basic electrical work. Well, I mean, a lot of those guys that actually change tires, too, they don't know about roadside assistance. They probably don't even have that shit on their motherfucking phone. Yeah. You know? Yeah. They probably, yeah, they probably got a suspended license and driving <laughs> illegally. Shut up, man. <laughs> Taylor Swift. Be. Time reveals 2023 person of the year is Taylor Swift. What you think about that, Schultz? I mean, she is. Oh, that's what we were talking about today on uh, on uh, on flagrant on the Patreon about like who is America's hero right now? Taylor who is Swift. America's leader? It depends. There's been different eras with different people. Barack was an era. It doesn't have to be like we the have no president. leader in politics. We have. I think we're. We I don't have think no we leader have a leader right now. Like, there's been times where different people were the person, okay? There's been, like it or not, Trump. There's been, like it or not, Obama. There's been, like it or not, Tom Brady. Like, when Tom Brady won that championship with the Buccaneers, it was like this moment where you go, holy shit. Is leader the right word? I don't know if leader is the right word. Uh, it, leader is the right word for the Trumps and Obamas. Let me use leader, like a hero, inspiration, person that we Taylor. go to. 100% Taylor. Taylor, I think, is it Taylor. right now. 100% Taylor. And, 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 I, and I, I can easily explain why. Okay, go. Because this whole elevation of Taylor that we've seen over the last two years, it came because she had a struggle. Oh, oh Charlie. You got to sit up. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. This whole um, elevation of Taylor Swift that we've seen over the last couple of years, it came because she had a struggle. Hmm. You know, she started the whole campaign about Scooter Braun finessed her out of her, Cap. you know, masters or whatever it She's is. She's the GOAT, but Cap. And but but, but it, it gave her a big bad villain. Her dad made a lot of money off that. Fifteen deal. million dollars. So it gave. I don't her, think that. I don't think there's enough on that. Fifteen million dollars. Dad made a lot of money on that deal. It gave her. It gave her um, a villain. And so not only a villain, it was a struggle story because it was like I can't get my masters back. But I'm going to go in this studio mm. and I'm going to re-record all of these albums, mm. which everybody knows is a tough task to do. Yeah. And so she, she sold it to her fans. Her fans loved it. And 
She put re-released those albums and shit doing one million copies in a fucking week. The last one, 1989, to redo, did 1.5. Unbelievable. So she's America's hero, and, and she's being rewarded for it. Then she went out on a, tri on a triumphant tour, you know? Unbelievable tour. You know, to go, out there, tour. To, to go out there and remind people of how dope she is, but also kind of a thank you to my fans. Yeah. You know, I'm going to charge you millions of dollars. I'm going to charge you big buku money to say thank you, you know? So she's the hero. And it's also interesting because the reality is Donald Trump is the time person of the year. Talk to me. Why? Four indictments, 91 criminal charges, two impeachments, still projected to be the next president of the United States of America. Plays 18 holes a day. <laughs> Ain't even campaigning on no policy. Ain't talked about no new legislation yet. Just straight revenge. Doesn't even debate. Doesn't even debate. <laughs> Isn't even showing up to the fucking debates. <laughs> yeah, how is he not the time person of the year? Nah, he's time person of the year. Hey, come on, man. Yeah, but it's not for good shit, though. It don't, it don't have America to be America's been rewarding bad behavior. Why stop now? <laughs> Why stop now? I mean, George I'm Santos charging $500 a fucking cameo. <laughs> to talk about the things that he got fired for, to make jokes about the things he got fired for. Come on, man. Trump is, people are saying Trump's gonna be a dictator. He gets asked about it by Sean Hannity. He said on the first day, this ain't even the funniest part of the clip. Play this clip, Taylor. I wanna go back this. to this one issue though, because the media has been focused on this and attacking you yeah. under no circumstances. You are promising America tonight. You would never abuse power as retribution against anybody. Except for day one. Yeah. Except for? He's going crazy. Except for day one. Meaning? How about I man? want to Rewind close it. the border, and I want... Rewind it just a little bit. I love this. Listen, play it, play it, play it, play it again. This is phenomenal. Play it again. I want to close the border, and I want... Go back a little bit more, a little bit more, right there. Except for? He's going crazy. Except for day one. Go back, go back, go back. Meaning? I want to close the border. Retribution against anybody. You would never abuse power as retribution against anybody. Except for day one. Yeah. Except for? He's going crazy. Except for day one. Meaning? I want to close the border, and I want to drill, that's drill, not a, that's, drill. That's not, oh, no. that's not retribution. I got I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be, you know, he keeps, we love this guy. He says, you're not gonna be a dictator, are you? I said, no, 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 other than day one. We're closing the border, and we're drilling, drilling, drilling. After that, I'm not a dick. So that, okay. that, that sounds to me like you're he going didn't understand the question exact retribution. He, <laughs> it's funny. The, what Hannity was setting him up for was basically saying, hey, you're going to be a peaceful president, right? You're not going to go locking people up because they gave you a hard time. That ain't who I am. And, well, no, <laughs> he answered a different question. He was like, he thought he was being asked, you're not going to be a dictator if you win. And he's like, I am. I'm closing the border and we're going to start to drill. These are the rules that I'm going to dictate. They just messed up, but it's still funny that he said. Man, Trump know exactly what the fuck he talking about. Yeah, he's like, I'm going to get out my talking points. It doesn't matter what the fuck you <laughs> ask. And by the way, it's <laughs> no going back to democracy after this dictatorship. Why would you go back to democracy after you've had a taste of dictatorship? <laughs> like, if you were a dictator, like, why would you go back to democracy? You, you know what's so funny? People? I didn't realize he was talking to Sean. I thought he was talking to himself. No. That's when I was like, this motherfucker cold. <laughs> he goes, he, he goes. goes Dictator day one. Then he goes, he's going crazy. I thought he was talking about himself. I was himself like, this too. motherfucker <laughs> is the illest. He said, he's going crazy. I didn't realize he was talking to Sean. He was pointing at Sean saying, look, he's about to go crazy because of my answer. Yo. You know what I, mean? I thought he was talking about himself. He's going crazy. Day one. Yeah. Only on day one. He's going crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Listen to it. Nah, that's Listen. fire. Listen to it. Go back. You sure he wasn't talking? He wasn't talking he's to himself, yo? No, he's talking to Sean. Listen. Sean, Listen. Sean set him over to softball. You would softball. never abuse power as retribution against anybody. Except for day one. Except for he's going crazy. Except for day one, crazy. meaning Look, he's going I want to crazy. close the Except border. Except for day one, Look, he's going crazy. You know what I'm saying? The crazy part is, and I said this on Daily Show, the fact that that's even a question in 2023. That's not a normal question to ever ask a presidential candidate, regardless of what his answer was. Are you a, are you going to be a dictator? And nobody gives a fuck. That's crazy. Why wouldn't I try it? <laughs> if I was Trump, why wouldn't I try a little dictation? Since nobody gives a shit. Nobody cares. Might as well. I know Trump got to go home at night sometimes and be like, 
Man, I should just dick. I'm really this getting shit. away with this shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, all this shit I got away with now. So he, he's sitting back like, so you mean to tell me I could really be Kim Jong-un? No, he's not, Sean. <laughs> hey. It ain't that far, bro. I don't <laughs> see why he wouldn't. <laughs> we going to see. This is a man who loves power, bro. We going to see. I don't see why he wouldn't. And John Kim, Stewart, and step Kim, it up. That's right. And Kim Jong-un, man, you kind of going out a little soft, yo. What kind of dictator are you? Did you see Kim Jong-un crying? Fair enough. Because he want more women in his country to have babies. <laughs> well, go get right. after it. You're a G. dictator, bro. Go get after Ban it. Ban abortion like America does. You know what I mean? <laughs> America don't cry over telling women what to do with their bodies. They just do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yo, salute to Big Unk, man. Steve Harvey, elevate you, okay? Got to tell you about something that's been keeping me feeling fresh, healthy, and energized lately. I actually should have drank some before I came in here today. It's called Elevate You Vitality Daily Greens, co-founded by the good brother Steve Harvey and formulated by Harvard scientists. This game-changing formula boosts your body's mitochondrial production, providing you with sustained energy throughout the day. No more relying on coffee or unhealthy energy drinks to get you going. It's packed with over 30 superfoods, vitamins, and minerals to feel energized, focused, and ready to tackle your day. I know how hard it is to stay on top of your health and nutrition game. Sometimes it feels like there just aren't enough hours in the day to get everything done. But with Elevate You, you don't have to worry about that anymore. This stuff is packed with all the nutrients and vitamins you need to keep your body running like a well-oiled machine. And the best part, it's super easy to use. Just mix a scoop into your water or juice and you're good to go. And it comes in three delicious flavors, chocolate, tart cherry, and original greens. And check this out. Elevate You also has a 60-day money-back guarantee. If you are not 100% satisfied, they'll refund your full purchase price. Take control of your health today and experience more daily energy with Elevate You Vitality Daily Greens. Go to ElevateYou.com, L-E-V-A-T-E-Y-O-U.com, and use promo code IDIOTS for 15% off your entire purchase. What else we got, Taylor? Ask an idiot. Do you want this right here? Let's, let's do an ask an idiot. No, Taylor, we don't want to talk about interracial relations. She loves... Loves, loves. You love when we go, let's do Ask an Idiot Even to though she tell wants, us about she all tell the us stories. How that, how that white boy broke her heart. She rekindled. Only thing a white boy she, did to me is eat my pussy. That's she rekindled it. with a white boyfriend at Howard Home, at Hampton Don't homecoming. Don't ever disrespect. She rekindled do with her white disrespect. boyfriend at Hampton Homecoming. Do not homecoming. disrespect. He done broke her fucking do not heart. Disrespect. That's what we do. Do not disrespect. We heartbreakers. Do not disrespect. Let's go, Taylor. Ask an idiot. We're heartbreakers. It's not a white man, y'all. Come on, big punt. <laughs> you know why I call you Big Point? Why? Because we keep asking to do asking idiots, but you keep punting the ball to something else. That's good a good point. It was a good try. Good save. <laughs> good save. <laughs> drunk again. Still drinking again. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor, I'm about to start <laughs> drinking <laughs> if you don't bring <laughs> up <laughs> 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 questions. I got the sugar. The sugar. Sugar, sugar. <laughs> come on, come on. Come on, Taylor. Ask an idiot. Come on, Taylor, gang. Stop. Let's go. What's wrong? Mike X0702 says, is there any truth to the saying, fake it till you make it? Yeah. I often wonder about this saying. Because I, I, think, yeah. I don't think you have to fake it to make it. I think if it's destined for you to make it, you're going to make it. You probably wasted a whole lot of time faking it and probably didn't even truly make it until you started being a true authentic version of yourself. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I don't know if fake it till you make it. I don't know if there's really any any truth to that. Cause I can't fuck with people who, I can't fuck with fake people. I can't do oh, it. Oh, but I didn't look at it like that. I looked at it at fake as you make it as more like you don't believe you're qualified for the thing, but you go try to do it anyway. And mm. through attempting to try to do it, you realize you are qualified. I never looked at it like that. That's how I looked at fake it till you make it. Like, if you out here, like, fake flexing or fake that, no. But if you have some imposter syndrome going into this job that you just got, I think that's normal. I think most people have that little bit of insecurity. Will I be able to, you know, rise to this challenge? And I think that's a human thing. No, that makes so sense. you should go and try to rise. Yeah, one of my, my mentors, one of my mentors, Dr. Robert Evans, man, salute the professor. He said to me, wave, this is back in this, like 2001, and I was doing radio at Hot 98.9 in Charleston, South Carolina, and um, they hired, they, 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 they fired my guy, Big G, salute to my dude, Big G, and they hired uh, a guy named Corey Hill to be the program director, salute to Corey Hill. Corey Hill was a radio personality on another station, and I remember being like, what does, why is Corey the program director? In my mind, I'm, I'm thinking that, and I'm saying that to my people, and I remember, um, I remember Cliff Fletcher, God bless the, bless the dead. 
Cliff was the owner of the station. Cliff asked me, I remember, I never forget, he was in the studio, he asked me, he said, you ever thought about being a program director? And I was like, nah, I don't know nothing about being a program director, you know? I like being a personality. And I remember telling Professor that after Corey Hill, who was a radio personality, who had never been a program director, had got the gig. And I remember telling Professor that Professor looked at me, he said, if I ever hear you do some shit like that again, I'll smack the shit out you. He said, you don't ever tell a motherfucker you, you, don't, know, you don't know how to do something. Mm. You can take that motherfucking job and we'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like, I guess, 100%. you know, figure it until you make it, I guess. How much did you get paid when you were a radio DJ or radio, what were you called? A radio, radio host? personality in Charleston, South Carolina? Charleston, that, yeah. At that time, that was 2000 and... 2000, 2001, I was getting paid $19,000 a year. And you couldn't tell me that wasn't the shit. And would you also have to do a bunch of things outside the job in order to make oh, yeah. money? Same shit that radio personalities do now. So hosting, hosting parties, parties, all of that shit, hell yeah. Would you make more money on that stuff than you would working as the uh, radio personality? I never tallied it up, but it probably was about the same if I- if So I, you, you use the fame and influence to, to create other revenue yeah, streams. Yeah, but back then you gotta think we weren't even, the, the, the money we used to get to charge, the money we used to charge for parties back then was like $150. No way. Yeah, so host, at the time in Charleston, South Carolina, hosting parties, I was getting $150, 2000, 2001. I was still living with my mom, $19,000 a year, getting like $100, $150 to host parties. Did you have any endorsements? Yeah, but I mean, it wasn't like, even then it wasn't crazy money. Like endorsements back then was like $50, <laughs> like $25, $50 or some shit like that. Like times have definitely changed, people. Definitely changed. But isn't that interesting? Like, I think maybe for younger people, they don't understand the influence that like the radio had. Oh, yeah. But the radio people were celebrities. To think that somebody, your local person that you hear every single day was making only nineteen dollars $19, a year. What was your time slot? I was on 7 p.m. to midnight. Is that a valuable slot? Is that I mean, like it's nighttime? A, is, is nighttime yeah, good? It's nighttime. I mean, it was valuable for me because I'm me. Right. So I was on there. Like I had the number. I had the number two show. Like I think it went from. I think they might have been like number 13 or something. I took it to like number two. Get out of here. Yeah. You know, it couldn't beat the Heritage Station. Z93 was the station I left to go there. But yeah, I mean that's the game. And I tell people all that all the time. Like in radio, right? Even if you on a show like, let's say, like, let's say the, the whoever we bring in for The Breakfast Club. The money's gonna be good, you know, but it's not gonna be- What are you be, gonna do with this opportunity? Yes, the money's gonna be good, but it's not gonna be what it, what it, what it will be, yeah. or what it can be, yeah. you know what I mean? So, but it's, it's so much, come on man, imagine the opportunity you're gonna get being on The Breakfast Club right now, a hundred plus markets. Being the only woman? You know what I'm saying? Nationally syndicated radio show, like whatever you're doing is gonna multiply times 10. And people don't, like what you just said is true. The power of radio is very, very, very different. Like very different. I would love to talk to Ricky Smiley. I would love for Ricky Smiley to talk about how his comedy career was before radio. Wow. As opposed to being on the radio every morning. DL Hughley, how was your comedy career? before radio as opposed to being on the radio every day. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like whatever you're doing is gonna elevate it times 100. Like, and that's why most people still stay on the radio. That's why Steve Harvey's still on the radio. That's why Mario Lopez is still on the radio. That's why Ryan Seacrest is still on the radio. Cause whatever you're doing outside of radio, you can magnify it times 100. Radio was the greatest amplifier out there. Mm -hmm. So even though I was making $19,000 a year in Charleston, South Carolina, I had that big amplifier. You know, that big stick. That's what we used to call it. So you left another radio station to go there? You left the number one? I left a bigger stick. To go to a little stick? To go with a more comfortable stick. Why'd you leave? Because they wouldn't make me full-time. I wasn't full-time at the other station. Ah, uh, then you got offered full-time from this Yeah, one. my man Big G, salute to Big G and Cliff Fletcher. First people to ever give me a full-time job in radio. And Big G said, yo, I want you to do a morning show at night. So that's when I learned to do segments and sketches and all of that other type of shit, you know, uh, at Hot 98.9 in Charleston. I'm forever indebted to Big G, man. Love you, Big Gio. George Cook, one of the greatest program directors in the motherfucking country. Don't you ever forget it. And what do you think it was that bumped you up in the ratings? Was there like an event that happened, an interview? Like how did people start realizing? I was retarded. 
You're talking about me in 2001. So you were just going crazy. In fucking sane. Pure insanity. <laughs> was there like a Anybody moment? in Charleston, South Carolina, who grew up listening to me on Hot 98.9 will tell you the same. And Re did you... Retarded. Did you go from... <laughs> <laughs> did you go from nighttime to day? What do you mean? Like, did you go to day? Did you go to morning? Like, no, nah, I only did night, seven to midnight. Wow. To everybody who worked at Hot 989 at that time, Divine Martino, my man D Nice, George Cook, Doug Banks, and Didi McGuire was a syndicated morning show. And that's it. That's literally all we had. You get a different audience too. I worked at night. I worked on Cosmic Cap Show. You worked on, yeah, nights was great because all the kids was home, you know what I'm saying? And my segments were geared towards the kids. I had a segment called Hate O'Clock. So I'd be like, hot 99, holla if you're hating. I just had motherfuckers calling up shitting on people no. <laughs> for a whole hour. No. <laughs> yes, hot 98.9, holla if you're hating. It's called Hate O'Clock. Everybody would just call and show each other. Then at 9 o'clock, I would do something called Lyrical Warfare, where I would have people call into the radio station live and rap. And live? I would just live? Live. And I would just shit on them. <laughs> and I had this drop that used to go, you are babunky, babunky, babunky. Whenever you was whack. <laughs> How did you have it live? Weren't they cussing? Yes. Retarded! Yo, you're wild. How many times do I have to tell you? You're did the wild. radio station get in trouble? Did y'all have Box Pro back then? Yeah, we had the 360. And, no, we didn't have Box Pro. We had the 360. The NPC uh, 360 shit. Um. It was just like, it was, it was, but by the way, funnest time ever. Funnest time ever. Cause I was, I got, I got fired. I got fired from Hot 99. <laughs> from doing what? That was my first firing. For doing what? Going live and having people cuss. What are you talking about? Well, That's oh. not why. Oh. They just told me they needed to move in another direction. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, you know, what do you think the reason was? Exactly. If you, I mean, when I think back on it now, it's cause I was retarded. <laughs> but like, you were the number two show. Doesn't mean anything. I had no leverage. I was making nineteen thousand dollars a year. Who is this motherfucker to be on our radio talking shit? I be talking. I be talking shit about the people downstairs, the sales people downstairs, oh my God. for no reason. Like no reason. I was. Re I'm t I was retarded. I know I was retarded. I'm not gonna say they're not like I wasn't retarded. I was retarded, straight up. And I can use that word because in 2001 that word was still appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> Next, question. I'm talking about myself from yeah. 2001. One I'm more, one more, then we gotta go to bed, yo. One more, we gotta go to bed. I want y'all to do this one. Which one? Neither one of these two. Which one? Whatever, which one you choose, one of these two. Go to the other one, scroll up. I like this other one. This guy needed some advice. Go to the guy who needed some advice. SJeb342, we're gonna end with you. He says, should I quit my job because everyone is semi-racist and only make black jokes to me? What do you think, Schultz? Um, I'm the wrong person to ask. Sorry, you are probably too. Ask, do, the, do they slap them? I, I, like, I like a good racially charged <laughs> joke. What's the job? I need to know the job. I mean. I like a good racially charged joke. Like if he's Santa Claus... No. <laughs> like, you're going to get these jokes being Black Santa. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? I think it just depends on the job. Like, is there Very a reason? Very true. Very true. What is the job? That is a great motherfucking point. Because why would they just be making black jokes about you? You work somewhere that either black people don't normally work. And these white people are comfortable enough to make black yeah, jokes? Like, something's yeah, going on yeah, here, yeah, yo. Yeah, something is going on. It might be, not be, it might be Latinos. I don't know. Something's happening. You got to give us more. Give us more as Jeb 342 yeah. and we can answer your questions because I'm the wrong person to ask. I literally just said this earlier. I like a good racially charged joke. You give me a good racially charged joke, I don't, you know, regardless of what the race is. Clean so the room. He, yes. also, he also says, I also feel like they don't promote me because it's a white guy club. Where the fuck do you work at, as yeah. Jeb 342? Tell, yeah, hey, brother, hit us up next week. And, uh... yeah. Tell us, and we'll give you yeah. some jokes to say. Exactly. We'll give you some, yeah. Let me give you some jokes to do. All right? That's it, guys. I'm tired of this shit, bro. It is 9.42 at fucking night. Bad don't time. ever say we don't love y'all. Okay? Time. I did Breakfast Club this morning, Daily Show today, and came in here and gave you how much time, Alex? About an hour and 40. Come on, what the fuck? 
An hour 40, and I only I mean, wanted to do 75. Don't ever say we don't love y'all, We okay? love y'all, man. All right? We As always, you. you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But if you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple of idiots, why the fuck are you smiling at me <laughs> like that? Because y'all look so delirious and tired. <laughs> you're not even that. Yo, come fight me then, bro. You, clearly, <laughs> clearly you don't want a piece of my mom's pie. Clearly you don't. You whoa, don't. Whoa, whoa. As always, no, if you listen to this podcast, you're you think we're smart, me. you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right but if you look to this podcast you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit you're right too it's the brilliant idiots podcast thank you for listening